I'm Connie with Copper Fox Farm and the Resiliency Institute. As you start to learn a little bit about permaculture, you'll probably hear the phrase chop and drop used quite a bit, but what exactly does that mean? What is it? It actually literally does mean to chop off part of a plant and then drop it on the ground, but why are we doing that? So I'm going to show you um, and I'll give you a couple of examples with some of the plants I have here. I'm standing in my front yard and I do have some edible landscaping here. So what, what's behind me right here is a cherry tree and planted right here next to the base of the tree is a plant called comfrey. And then right in front of me, and I'll zoom on that a little bit um, in a minute so you can see that better, but there's an aronia bush here. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about these three and about chop and drop. So first, let's take a look at this comfrey plant. This is a very large plant, as you can see, coming around here. This is all one plant. It's kind of wrapped around the whole back of this cherry tree here. And um, it's got all of this thick, lush green growth, as you can see. So this is full of nitrogen. So when you're adding that, you chop it and you drop it on the soil, you're adding some of that nitrogen back to the soil, which is one reason to do that. Um, and you're also adding biomass. This is a lot of organic matter that you'll be putting back into the soil and feeding the soil food web. Um, but in addition to that, there are several other reasons that we would use a plant specifically like comfrey for chop and drop rather than just any old plant. Um, there are certain plants that are more ideal to use for chop and drop. And so this cherry tree here, the, the roots on fruit trees grow out wide and shallow. So they're getting the nutrients they need from up near the surface of the soil. And the comfrey, on the other hand, has a very deep tap root. So it's reaching way down farther to other nutrients potentially that the cherry tree can't reach or isn't getting access to. So when that comfrey pulls up, it's mining all of these minerals, things like calcium, magnesium, potassium, iron. It's pulling these things out of the soil and it doesn't just store them there in their tap root. Sorry about the background noise there. Wait for the truck to go by. It doesn't just store them in the tap root and keep them there. It pulls them up into the plant, into all this lush green growth that you're seeing and makes it available for the plant to use for its health. So when we chop parts of this comfrey off and lay it down on the surface of the soil underneath this cherry tree, what it's doing then is making that available to the tree up in the shallow, you know, the, the top surface level of the soil so that the cherry tree can access those nutrients also. So I plant it right here because in permaculture design, it wouldn't really make as much sense to have this comfrey on the other side of the yard and then chop it and carry it all the way back here and drop it under the tree. It just makes sense to plant it where you're going to use it. So with it being right here, you can see how large it is. As it starts getting tall and it flops over, I'll just cut the ends off. So like here, this part is all flopped over and uh, I would just chop all these ends off and then pile it underneath the front of the tree where the comfrey doesn't reach or around other plants in this section of garden. I wanted to get a quick video of this little bumblebee that just popped into that flower. The comfrey I think is a wonderful plant. It smells really good. Um, when you're working with it, it, it just really smells nice to me. And in addition to that, um, it's got those pretty little flowers that the bees do enjoy quite a bit. The only thing I would warn about is that the plant is pretty prickly, so I'd recommend you use your, you know, wear your garden gloves when you're handling this plant. But it's a really great plant for chop and drop. In addition to using it around the cherry tree, I mentioned I used it around other plants in this space. So right here on the other, you know, just a few feet away, in the other direction is this aronia, and I'm going to come around and give you a better view. So if you're not familiar with aronia, it is native to the U.S. It is a deciduous shrub, so it loses its leaves in the fall. This particular variety is called Autumn Magic. It's a cultivar. It gets its berries a bit later in the season than other aronias do, and it turns a brilliant red in the fall, so it gets really nice fall color. It's a fantastic replacement if you're trying to get rid of things like burning bush in your yard. We love that beautiful red fall color, but burning bush is on the DNR list of invasive plants in our area. So if we can remove those burning bushes, this aronia is a great plant to replace it with. It's, you know, it's good for the wildlife and the insects. It gives you food and it still gives you that beautiful red fall color. So these berries right here on this particular bush, they're pretty sweet, but they are a bit astringent too. So they're not the best for um, you know, fresh eating, but they are really good in 
syrups, you can bake with them, you can juice them and mix them with other things or add a little bit of raw honey to sweeten it up a bit. Um, they're really good uh, for you. They are high in antioxidants. It's one of those superfoods. Um, so I would definitely look into it. There's a, a lot of good information about the nutritional benefits of these aronia berries. Um, and so I'm actually going to be harvesting these and making a jelly to bring to the market. So they make a really good jelly. And you can see then from this aronia right across this path. Now here's the comfrey right here. So I will also chop and drop pieces of this comfrey right underneath the aronia to help feed it. And so, well now I've got a hose down here, but aside from the hose, if you can see kind of the black crunchy looking parts of the plants under there, that's from when I did a chop and drop a few weeks back. And so this is what the comfrey looks like as it starts to break down and we'll be giving all of its nutrients back into the soil to help feed this aronia bush. And this plant is so plentiful, you get so much to chop and drop. Um, there's just, this is one plant and they just come back beautifully too. Every time you chop them, they just come back with even more. So my cherry tree is happy, my aronia is happy, and the other plants around in my edible landscaping here are happy. So that's a little bit about chop and drop. So hopefully the next time you hear that phrase, you'll know what it is and maybe you can implement it into your own yard as well.